If your orchids are damaged or sick, they don't have crown or any leaves, this can happen when your orchids are rotting due to overwatering, have any parasites such as scales, or you keep them at too low of a temperature below 10 degrees Celsius. In most cases, orchids are thrown away into the garbage, and not many people know that there is a chance to save these orchids. Monophodile orchid stems can produce cakeys on what is left after crown loss. So make sure you investigate your plant before throwing it away and to see if any damaged orchids still have any healthy roots or if it has any chance to regrow. So what do I normally do in this situation? I'm going to show you in a second, but first I just want to say a few words about Phalaenopsis orchids and their roots and their anatomy. Aerial roots of orchids are like the roots of other epiphytes. They don't really need substrate because they can absorb water and nutrients from the air. Aerial roots are covered with sponge-like tissue. They contain chlorophyll and they participate in photosynthesis. This fact makes leafless orchids keep growing without leaves. Roots are, do not go into the substrate, but rather out of or sit on the surface of the substrate using it just enough to attach themselves to it for support. Having this knowledge, I've created a simple way to save your damaged, crownless, leafless orchids. I'm going to take a cylinder vase or any other type of vase, about 16 to 20 inches tall and about this wide. You want it to be able to fit one orchid, just like so. The vase is going to help me keep the humidity level high. On the bottom of the vase, I'm going to put a small amount of rainwater or osmosis water. And on the top of the water, I'm going to be placing my own fresh ground sphagnum moss. We do have a video on our channel on how to grow your own moss, so please check that out. The link is below. Fresh sphagnum will play the role of substrate. And it is alive and it will continue to grow and prevent bacterial growth, rotting and instead provide my damaged orchids with the humidity level needed and many nutrients. Then I'm going to place my orchid on top of the moss, but not into. First, I'm going to cut off any dry roots and I'm going to place it on top of the moss. You want to remember to not put it into the moss. Sphagnum moss has many mosses are epiphytes and they like acidity and so do orchids. They will create that symbiotic relationship and it will help keep the orchids alive. So I'm not going to cover my vase with anything because it already has enough moisture inside and covering it may cause rotting. So I'm going to place it on a windowsill with a decent amount of sunlight and I'm going to begin to observe. Normally in a couple weeks, small green buds will appear on the monopodile stem, which is left after all the leaves have fell from it. It is indeed cakey buds from which new orchids will grow. Sometimes I can get a few of them, like on this one I can already see three of them. Which means I will get three new orchids from this crown. No extra watering is needed in terms of spraying, I just add the water to the bottom of the vase if the water level begins to get low. It is crucial to keep your moss alive. Then the orchids will grow bigger with more developed roots. I can separate the larger cakey with the developed independent roots, as you can see here, and plant them separately into my so-called nursery vase with the same idea with a live moss. I will plant them in a regular substrate and continue to take routine orchid care. Then the cakey will grow bigger. So thank you so much for watching. Leave any comments or questions you have below and don't forget to subscribe.